Tonight, the search grows for the person who shot and killed a man in Hampton. Thanks for sticking with us tonight. I'm David Allen and I'm Janet Roach. We start tonight with a deadly shooting. It happened at nine this morning on Shell Road. Police officers found the man's body in the parking lot of Roy's Quick Service. 13 News Now reporter Nico Clemens spoke with worried neighbors. A community on edge. It's Hampton. too surreal. A homicide in broad daylight on Shell Road in Hampton. Police say someone shot a man one time in front of Roy's quick service convenience store. It's unsettling. It's unsettling, especially this time of day. Charlene Green lives feet away from the store. She left her house early this morning, but when she came back, police and crime scene tape were everywhere. When I saw the police lights, when I came back around on Shell Roll, I said, they're by my house. I spoke with the store manager who didn't want to go on camera, but he says the man came inside his store, bought a piece of candy and left. The store manager says he started helping another customer when he heard a pop. Nothing surprises me anymore. <laughs> there are eight working cameras outside this convenience store. The store manager says when he heard the gunshot, he looked at the cameras to see what was going on. When he went outside, the shooter was gone. Usually we do hear a lot of gun gunshots at night, but not during the day. Police are reviewing the video to see what went down. The store manager says he's never seen the victim before and doesn't believe he's a regular customer, but he says his store had nothing to do with the shooting. Even though I, I probably w didn't know the person, it makes me feel like I know them because it's in this neighborhood. Three nearby Hampton City schools went into modified lockdowns because of the scene. Green, like many of her neighbors, knows this isn't the first shooting in their neighborhood, and it won't be the last. It's very frightening. I have my faith, though, and, and I know that God will protect me. Police have not released the victim's name, and there's no information on a suspect. If you know anything, call police. In Hampton, I'm Nico Clemens, 13 News Now. Tonight, Norfolk police continue looking for this missing woman. She's Susan Moish. She was last seen about a month ago, we're told, on December 20th. She is 47. If you know where she could be, you're asked to call police. Tonight, we're learning about sexual harassment allegations against a longtime Suffolk councilman. A woman says Curtis Miltier Sr. made harassing phone calls to her room while they were on a business trip to Florida. Miltier tells us the accusations are not true and that he never called the woman. He believes the woman is angry because he did not support her friend who ran for the school board. A spokeswoman for the city confirms that a complaint was made this week and Miltier has been on council since 1980. Right now, Norfolk Public School officials are meeting with community members about shifting start times for every school in the district. The hearing is going on at Lake Taylor Middle School. 13 News Now reporter Allie Weatherton talked to families ahead of tonight's meeting. Several high school parents are giving the idea of changing the start times at Norfolk Public Schools in A+. They are able to get a little bit of more sleep, especially having a teenager in your house, such as mine that work at night. Right now, high school students in Norfolk Public Schools start class around 730 in the morning. Middle school students start at 815. An elementary school either starts at 815, 855 or 930. If later start times go into effect, high schools could start between 815 to 9 o'clock. Middle and elementary school would start before that. Evidence shows that there are academic outcomes that are tied to high schoolers who are able to start school later. Dr. Noel Gabriel is Norfolk School Board Chair and is also a physician with EVMS. She says an extra hour of sleep can make a big difference in a teenager's learning. The direct impact on students is going to be one student achievement, to uh, better outcomes for uh, mental and physical health. But Dr. Gabriel says some parents aren't for the plan. Here's one reason. The older kids who come home early are responsible for getting the little ones who are in elementary school home. And so that's a factor that we have to take into consideration. Now, this isn't the last hearing. Dr. Gabriel says there will be at least one more and also a survey that will go out to parents. The school board is expected to vote on this issue in February. In Norfolk, Allie Weatherton, 13 News Now. Developing tonight, a new push to raise the minimum wage in Virginia. Now, what do you think the minimum wage should be? Go to 13newsnow.com slash vote. You can also choose an answer on your app. A bill going through the General Assembly would eventually bump it up to $15 an hour. 13 News Now reporter Evan Watson joins us with more details about this proposal. Virginia has matched the federal minimum wage since 2010, so this would be the Commonwealth's first increase in those nine years.
Right now, the lowest paid workers in Virginia are making $7.25 an hour. It's been $7.25 for a very, very long time. This new bill would double that. If passed, Virginia's minimum wage would jump to $10 per hour this July. Then it would climb to $13 per hour in July of 2020 and finally settle at $15 per hour in 2021. One way or another, low-end wages in Virginia are going to have to become more competitive in the next two or three years uh, in order to keep, fun, keep finding growth for the state. Jeff Evans owns a shoe repair shop in Ghent. He wants to see the minimum wage increase, but does worry about how businesses will react. Some of the costs, you're going to have to learn how to work with a fewer, you know, a smaller staff. But at the same time, I think the consumers can expect to see, you know, prices go up because something's got to cover the salaries. I'm not sure what the magical number that it should be should, you know, I, I don't know how people would live on $10 an hour, but, um, but I guess they could have a better shot at living at 10 versus 725. Companies could also be incentivized to automate the lowest paying jobs. People who uh, see a wage increase would probably feel like they win. And then it comes at the expense of those who don't see a wage increase or see their job go away. The bill still has a long way to go. It narrowly passed a Senate committee by a six to four vote. Now it heads to the full Virginia Senate for a floor vote. Four of your local delegates voted in favor of the minimum wage increase in that six to four committee vote. That would be Tommy Norman, Frank Wagner, Luis Lucas and Lionel Spruill. Live in studio, Evan Watson, 13 News Now. Well, Congressman Bobby Scott tweeted today in support of raising the minimum wage. He says there is no place in America where someone working full time and making the federal minimum wage can make ends meet. No person who works full time year round should live in poverty. The Virginia Chamber of Commerce says the proposal would primarily impact small businesses who rely on affordable labor to compete. It recommends keeping the federal minimum wage standard to maintain the Commonwealth's competitiveness as we continue to work towards our goal of becoming the best state in which to do business. Well, we've been asking you, what do you think the minimum wage should be? Most of you... Uh, say it should be about $12 as you see there on the screen and thanks to everyone who voted.